Yes. It's 8.05. May we start, please? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. May I? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I welcome you all to this session. And I hope that we all pray together and sing together. And also, when we start the talk, uh, afterwards, I would love to hear your comments or uh, observations or anything you like to ask about. Name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and at all times and forever and ever. Amen. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, for keeping us safe until this hour and protected us from everything. We thank you because you're giving us the opportunity to be together and we all learn from you. It is indeed our weaknesses and sins that brought this pestilence on us and forgive our sins, which we have committed knowingly and unknowingly. And we pray for this disease to go away, for the people to be healed, and to repose the soul of the people who departed, and to give comfort of the Holy Spirit to their families. We also pray for our church to reopen soon. We now value everything that we had in our church, and we hope soon that you allow us to go to your house so that we need it, and also we can enjoy it, we and our kids and everybody else. Accept us, dear Lord, according to thy mercy, and not according to the multitude of our sins. And hear us as we all pray thankfully, our Father, who art in heavens, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heavens. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing together a song or a hymn from one of the liturgical songs. So when it comes on the screen, kindly please um, sing together. May their holy blessing be with us, amen. Glory to thee, O Lord. Lord Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, bless us, Lord, repose them, amen. We are going to pray together using Psalms. As we said yesterday, the Psalms are the best material for prayer because they were totally inspired by the Holy Spirit. We're going to pray together Psalm 23, which is a very popular psalm. Many of you know it by heart. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restored my, restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. 
you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Alleluia. Alleluia. May we sing it together? A liturgical hymn, please. As it was and shall be from generation to generation and unto all ages of ages. And then we're going to pray another psalm. Psalm 91. Psalm 91 is a, is a very popular psalm that gives the comfort a lot. And it shows the individual that he is in the hands of God and that his eye is on the person. Let us all pray it together. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the from the birdless bestialness. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night. The word afraid, somebody calculated it or counted in the Holy Bible, and it happened to be 365 the, the number of days in the year, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lies waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. You see how with the protection, thousands can fall this side and this side, but nothing will touch us. We are his children. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you. Can you imagine the angels to have charge over us, to serve us, to keep you in all your ways? In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent, you shall tremble underfoot. Because he has set his love upon you, that is the key word, all the details, because he has set his love upon you. 
Therefore, I will deliver him. I will set him on the high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer. You see the solid relationship with God. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Great. With long life, I will satisfy him. Amazing that some people think long life is by the lifestyle or by the food or by pleasures of the world. But long life is really comes from peace with God. When the person is leading a peaceful life, then he actually, the majority of the saints show us this, that with long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Alleluia. Amen. And this is a beautiful Psalm 91. So many people try to know it by heart, which will be good, or meditate on it because it gives the comfort of the Holy Spirit to the person. Let me, if I may, start on my talk. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and ever, Amen. Yesterday, yesterday was the first to talk, and we said that the subject, the church in your house. What brought this subject here, the church in you, your house? What brought it these days? One of the servants asked for it. And not only asked for it, but also um, other people asked for it, which I felt it is the voice of God to show us that it's needed these days, especially the family is sitting together, working from home together, spending more time with each other. And we thought that it will be good that if we focus on the church in your house with one item in mind, to get some practices, some specific practices that become, that become habit. And when they become habit, during these days, we can take them long term to become, ex to become excellent habits that we learn it from this period of time. So the subject of the church in your house. When we talk, I'll give you just a few points of what we covered last time. We said this is not just an expression that's mentioned in the Holy Bible, the church in your house, but it has basis for it. And the church in your house is an expression only in the New Testament. Because the Lord Christ came and gave us the new nature. Instead of the corrupted nature before Christ, he gave us a new nature in which the Holy Spirit resides in us. And we meditated on the verse, you are the altar of God. And the Spirit of God resides in you. And we took the residence of the Holy Spirit in us since we were baptized and chrismated and made, that, made us special people. And we said that this is not just a word that the Holy Spirit resides in us. It has to show. It ha we have to feel it. It has to be recognized that we have something different, the residence of the Holy Spirit. The residence of the Holy Spirit was not existent in the Old Testament because the Holy Spirit can come on certain people for certain time and leaves them at another time. But for us, the Holy Spirit is resident for us and it changed our nature. And because if we live under the same roof, we become the church inside our house. Also in Luke 18, also we meditated on if two or three people are gathered in my name, I will be among them. So we talked about so many things in that verse, but there is also, we said at the beginning, we want to practice something to become a habit. And we take it from this period to become lasting with us. What is the habit that we learned after a lot of discussions and talk last time? The habit is, don't defile the house of God. Because the verse has two parts. The first part, you are altar of God. 
and the Holy Spirit resides in you. But the second half of the verse, if you defiled the house of God, he will let you defile it. Which means you can bring defilement to the church of God inside your house. So be careful not to be the one to bring defilement into the church inside your house. The house needs special respect. The house is a house of God inside your family or inside your dwelling. If you're going to be aggressive with people or to say bad words to people, you are really defiling the house of God. You're not respecting your house. If you really are going to bring a bad relationship into your house, you are really defiling the house. If you are really bringing an addiction to your house, please don't complain later and say, you know what, the, the kids are not doing well. You brought it to the house. You brought the evil things to the house. You defiled the thing. So maintain purity through your action, in the first one, so that you don't complain later that the kids were troublesome or anybody was troublesome. So that was the practice that after a lot of de deliberation, we concluded it. Don't bring sin inside your house. The, the, even the bed is supposed to be pure bed. This is a church inside your house. It's called the church inside your house. You have to respect the place that you're in and don't bring sin from any relationship outside. Don't bring it into your house. Now, I'm pursuing with the second talk now about what is the role of everyone inside the church of your house? What is your membership into the church inside your house? Is it enough that I go to heaven alone and the rest of my family don't go in? It's not nice. And it's not proper and it's not required. You don't go to heaven alone. You intend to go to heaven and all the members of your house go to heaven. In fact, in Sunday school, since they taught us the Lord's Prayer, they said to us, when you pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven. And then it goes in to say, forgive our sins, our trespasses, our, us. So it is the Lord's Prayer that he taught us don't think of it in a single way. Think of it that you are responsible for the whole group. You don't want to go without them. The wife will say, I would like to go to heaven with my husband and with my kids. And actually, if you augmented this approach, you can think of the group as the group of your family or the group of the church that you belong to or even the whole society. But at least for now, it's a sense of responsibility and sense of love that you target, that you go to heaven alone without your people. You do your utmost best. There is nothing in life that we can do more than our utmost best. You do your utmost best for the salvation of everyone in your group to go to heaven with you. And this is why the title of this, the your membership in the church inside your home, your care for the church people inside your home. I will go through the Holy Bible with some examples to show that this, this is a group approach. It's not to be taken individually. So, for example, when the Lord Christ visited the house of Zacchaeus, Zacchaeus was a short man and he was anxious to see the Lord Christ and he climbed on the tree doing his utmost best and taking the risk, the risk in order to see him. When the Lord Jesus visited his house, he started to say, I'm going to give fourfold to the people to whom I wasn't fair. And he really said many, many things. What was the answer of the Lord Christ? He said, today, salvation 
has come to the whole house. Not him alone, to the whole house. So the grouping, the feeling of a group, the feeling of the family, the repentance of one like the chaos brought salvation for the whole family. And this must be the feeling with every one of us, the sense of responsibility of the whole group. Other example in the book of Acts, the jailer of Philippi. The jailer of Philippi jailed St. Paul. And when he saw the miracle of the angel and how the gate of the jail opened, he came to St. Paul and said, what can I do? Tell me, what can I do? And St. Paul was very clear. He said, have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, you and your household. You and your household. So we have to go out of the idea that it is me, me, me. Who you and the, your household. And then the rest of it, that the jailer of Philippi took St. Paul to his house. And when St. Paul went to his house, he baptized him and all the people of his household with him. So important, not that I go to heaven, I go to heaven with my family. I go to heaven with my wife. I go to heaven with my husband. I go to heaven with my children, minimum. But if my faith is started to be bigger, I wanted to go heaven with the rest of the group of the church, even with the whole world. But at least for now, one has to think and believe and act this way. In the book of Joshua, he said, as for me and my house, we worship the Lord. Not me alone, as for me and my house. So the church in your house necessitates that you are a member of this church, holding love for all the members and holding responsibility for all the members. This doesn't mean that I go and shout at them because I don't like what they do. This doesn't mean that I supervise them because I know I have to take it easy step by step. I have to manifest my love to them through my prayers for them and understanding their position and being patient with them and try to make them very important exactly like how I am important to myself in order to go to heaven. We all remember the, the event of Noah when there was a punishment on the earth at the time of the flood. And Noah worked hard and he hired people to build the, the ship for him, but nobody believed him. But the time came that he went into the ship alone by himself, no. He went with his wife and he had three sons and the three sons had their wives. So eight people went to the boat. Again, he couldn't leave his household. Me and the, me and the people who belong with me Nobody of them will be hurt. They are all in my heart and they all went to, into, the, into the ship altogether. So it is a concept in life that you always pray for other people in the family. You always study their situation, be patient with them. And always try your best with them in all means by all means, by all methods. For example, in Deuteronomy 6, a very important chapter about the importance of the word of God. He said, let the word of God be written on your doors and be written on your windows. And then he goes on and he say, tell it to your kids. Tell the stories of the Holy Bible to your kids and let them learn the word of God, if you stop the, at learning the word of God only, you're not doing fairly. You must read it for your kids and give them all the experience that you got from 
the word of God. Say, for example, you knew about a miracle. Say it to your kids. Say it to your husband. Say it to your wife. And give them, give them all the background, all the experience that you have. Because your household is part of your program. Like many times, we, uh, the, our program in life, it's my work, it's my journey, it's what I do, it's what I talk to people. But you know what? The church in your house, you are a member of the church in your house. You have to, we have to be part of your program. You sit down and pray, I like to pray for this little boy or this little girl or for the husband or for the wife. And God help us and be patient in order to, like someone planting something. You plant it and doesn't bring the fruit all of a sudden. It's going to take time, but you are in the right direction when you do that. Many times the religious people fall in the trap. It is me, it is me, it is me. Let me handle my spiritual life. Let me care for my spiritual life, which is good, but not alone. As a member of the church in the house, you are supposed to go above this level and care for everybody in the house. Even what we call the best verse in the Holy Bible, when it said, love your neighbor as yourself. How can you manifest loving your neighbor as yourself when it comes to the family? That you really, really care for them from the heart and being so careful not to insult any one of them, because again, insulting any one of them is like insulting the person inside the house of God itself because your house is a house of God. When, what will happen when we invite a priest to pray in our house because we bought a new house or whatever and he sprinkles water on the walls? He prays and say, houses of prayers, houses of purity, houses of blessing and this is the meaning of the church inside your house this part by the way is obtained from the litany of the congregation as we have the, as the priest prays it in the altar he also prays it in the house so that the family becomes a blessed family as a group blessed family let me if i may give you some examples of blessed families a beautiful blessed family is the family of the Karaya, elizabeth and saint john the baptist the Karaya, who actually opened his mouth after it got open and talked about very deep things about the lord christ elizabeth who was filled with the holy spirit John the Baptist who was filled of the Holy Spirit and you can see tremendous family. Very specialized in this blessed family is the Gospel according to St. Luke. The Gospel according to St. Luke is specialized in repentance on women, on children, but he is the one who told us about this very blessed family of the Kariah, Elizabeth and St. John the Baptist. Remember also the, the family, the blessed family of Yochabit, the mother of Moses the prophet. Yochabit had three kids. One of them, Moses, who was the one who received the Ten Commandments. Look, I'm giving examples of very high, good families, very excellent families, that we strive not to work alone, but to work with our families to get some production like that. Moses, she had Moses, and she had Aaron, and she had Maryam. And the three of them is really fantastic three kids. Moses, the prophet, Aaron, the head priest, and Maryam, the prophetess, who used to sing very beautiful songs. This is the production of a house that is in cooperation, a house in which every person is responsible for the church inside his house. One of the 
interesting families is the family of St. Basil the Great. St. Basil the Great is the head bishop uh, of Nisus, and he had a brother who was also head bishop of Caesarea Cappadoc, and he had a brother who was Peter, the bishop of Subsidia, and he had uh, a sister who is Macrina, the head of the monastery, of the head of the uh, convent of the nuns. Four kids, what kind of mother did they have? What kind of father did they have? Those people forgot about individuality. They felt that they belonged to the church inside their house and the general group of working together, not working alone and not trying alone. But when this sense of cooperation is inside the family, the family produces. Nobody is perfect. We have to bear with one another. But once we bear with one another and develop the team concept, then the family is moving forward and blessed by God. I also just remembered Timothy, the disciple of St. Paul. And when he wrote for him the epistle, he said, I recognize the faith that is in you, which is perfect faith, faith, which was in you and it was dwelling in your mom, Louise, that was her name, and your grandmother, Ifniki. You can see the whole chain of people, really, church in their house, and they, they made very important delivery of faith. That is what is supposed to be the Christian life, delivery of faith. Like, yes, you would like to have your kids to be in sports, that's fine. Yes, you would like to have your kids to play music, that is fine. Yes, you would like to have your kids to be good in academic life. That's fine. But it's very important as well yet that you deliver life. That expression of delivering life is very essential in the family, that you are delivering life. You have the faith in your heart, similar to Timothy, obtained it from his mom, Louise, and from, uh, from his grandmother, Ifniki delivering of faith. Also a good family that had the coherence and had the closeness with Christ is the family of Mariam, Martha and Lazarus. Although they have different talents, Mariam was in meditation and she was sitting at the feet of the Lord Christ to meditate and to hear him. Martha was in service and Lazarus, whom the Lord raised after four days, but the whole family is intimate to the Lord Christ, and they were together in coherence. You can see it clearly that how Mariam and Martha loved their, their brother Lazarus, and they sent the message very clearly saying, this is the one whom you love, he is sick. And also, I cannot skip Mariam, who is the mother of St. Mark the Apostle, who made her house the first church, with a full sense of cooperation. The family without cooperation is not a family. But we, we like to go more than the cooperation. We'd like to go into the level that each individual cares about the other one like himself. And he, when he wants to go to heaven, or she wants to go to heaven, she likes to say, me and the people to whom I belong, we are all together in heaven. And indeed, you can read in John 13, 14, and 15, and 16 about the descent of the Holy Spirit on the disciples in the same house uh, of St. Mark the Apostle. Uh, at least we have to start with something. At least we start with something and it grows. One thing we start that it is a group worshiping in the church, in the house of God. 
it's a, a group prayer that I pray for every one of them and help each one of them. And not only that, we start with few things. How about just a small corner for prayer that has all, everything belongs to a church? It has the Holy Bible, it has the Agbeya, it has ni some nice icons, it has the liturgy book, it has hymn, hymnal book, it has so many things that belong to the church at large, so that our house is the, the church also. There is a church in our house with all what it entails. I can't uh, forget to mention that contrary to what I said, there is the other picture in the Holy Bible. Families that disappeared together and went to Hades together because one of them went to Hades and he pulled everything, everybody else. So you see, you want to go with everybody to heaven, not the other way around. The Holy Bible tells us about three fellows called Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. And they said at one point in time, who are those priests? We don't care. We are all together. And nobody is better than anyone, although they were warned to stop this. When, the, when they said this, the earth opened up and swallowed them, not only them, but them and all their houses, all their households, all their families went together and where they were swallowed by the earth because of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. We must all remember also the family of Ali the priest who didn't take care of his kids and he was spoiling them. And as he spoiled his kids, he paid the price. The time came that he lost his priesthood and he was killed and his kids killed and the whole family disappeared and he became a good example for someone who will take the whole family down to earth because he was not paying attention. He thought himself that he's a head, head, head priest at that time and that's enough for everything, but it wasn't. It is a group worship. When we say the church inside the house, it's a group worship. It's not me alone, it is all of us. And whatever goes in comes out as well. This is why it's usually said, bring up the people or the kids in the fear of God. Bring up the kids in the fear of God. How about if you don't bring them in the fear of God? The time will come that you will pay the price. They will make life sour for you. They will make you hope that they didn't come, that you are here on earth. Because it was you. It was you who ne neglected the group belonging of the church inside the house. You thought of yourself only. You didn't straighten up the kids. And this is why this is what happens for you. So moving forward with the church in your house and your membership in the church in your house, pray for everyone. Pray for everyone in your prayers, everyone in your household. Deal with everyone in your household to the best of your ability so that they see in you the picture of Christ. The Holy Bible is saying they will look at your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. You can be a stumbling block for everyone in your house if you treat them aggressively. They will say, hey, this is the person who is praying, this is the person who belongs to Christ, and he or she is very aggressive like that, we don't want Christ. So, you are part of the church in the house. You have to be watching, not to let them become angry from Christ. If you lost them, 
they are going to be angry from Christ because they thought you have the image of Christ. And also we have to share with them their sadness and their weaknesses and their hopes. We have to participate with them if we adopted that technique as in the Holy Bible, that togetherness, not individualism, togetherness. We are all together. And you say to the Lord, I want to go to heaven with my family. Me and my family go together in heaven and I want them to be as you wanted all of us to be in heaven. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. I would love a lot if anyone kindly say any comment or any observation or any point that you liked from this presentation or any question, of course. Um, hi, Abuna. Hello. Hi, hi Abuna. Hi, Ayman. How are you, Abuna? Fine, Habib. Yeah, th thank you so much for the nice um, and blessed uh, message, uh, Abuna, for uh, our family. Thank you. Um, so just a question about uh, the confession, Abuna. How we can make the, uh, the youth, um, of course, of our families um, interested or uh, get them into confession and um, get them close to Abuna? Good question. Thank you. Anything, anything, anything you have to pray for it. So we can just one second. We cannot get anything without prayer. So pray for it. And the other thing, let them know that you are so, someone you are confessing. When they see that you are confessing, they will follow your footsteps. One time, there was a lady complaining that her daughter, who was teenagers at, at the time, is refusing entirely to confess. Although her mom is confessing regularly. So I said, you know what? Sit down beside my office on the chair so that she knows that you are, you are waiting for your turn to come to confess. And once she finds that you are confessing, she will follow footsteps, your full, and, and it actually happened because she found her mom waiting and waiting. And sometimes my line, the line up on my door becomes long. And she said, okay, there must be something. And then also over time, she will run into problems and she will find that the only way to solve the problems is to have a second thought, an additional mind, additional prayer. That is the function of the confession that you don't act based on your mind alone, you must have another opinion with you. Especially the other opinion must have no conflict of interest. There is no way that I have a, a question, then I go to a, an individual who has a conflict of interest with me. I must go to another one who has no conflict of interest. And the father of confession indeed has only one interest, which is the benefit of the person who come to confession. Pray for her and show her that you are regular in confession, and she will follow your footsteps. Thank you for the question. Any comment, please, or question? Or any point that, that you liked, or any point that you observed? Yeah. Uh, sorry again, Abuna, for the... Uh, just maybe to uh, summarize the family who, who, who didn't uh, follow um, um, didn't follow um, the Bible or the family has a trouble in the uh, in the Old Testament um, I think that the family of the sorry when I forgot Korah uh, uh, Korah okay yes Korah wa Adam Okay. 
that's just an example to show when someone falls, he brings the whole family with him or with her. We have to be aware that we are a group. We are not individuals. We are a group together. That is the yeah. essence of the talk. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome, Yaiman. Anybody else with an observation or to tell us what attracted your attention, if there is any? Okay, I thank you very much. We would like to sing it together uh, before we adjourn. Would you kindly bring the song that we, Psalm 150, that we are going to sing it together? Alleluia, 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 Jesus Christ, passed it for us, for the days and for the nights. Praise God in all his sins. Alleluia, Alleluia, Jesus Christ, passed it for us for the days and for the nights. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Alleluia, Alleluia, Jesus Christ fasted for us for the days and for the nights. Praise him. For his mighty acts, Alleluia, Alleluia, and Jesus Christ fasted for us for the days and for the nights. Praise him according to the multitudes of his greatness. Alleluia, Jesus Christ fasted for us for the days and for the nights. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Alleluia, Alleluia, Jesus Christ. Fast it for us for the days and for the nights. Breathe him with the sultry and the hard. Alleluia, Alleluia, Jesus Christ fasted for us for the days and for the nights. Praise him with tremble. And chorus, Alleluia, Alleluia, Jesus Christ fasted for us for the days and for the nights. Praise Him with strings and organs, Alleluia. Alleluia, Jesus Christ fasted for us for the days and for the nights. Praise Him with pleasant sounding symbols. 
Alleluia, Alleluia, Jesus Christ fasted for us forty days and forty nights. Praise Him upon the symbols of joy. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Jesus Christ, fasted for us forty days and forty nights. Let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord, our God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Christ fasted for us forty days and forty nights. Glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Jesus Christ fasted for us. Forty days and forty nights. Now and ever and unto the ages of all ages. Alleluia. Jesus Christ fasted for us. Forty days and forty nights. Alleluia, Alleluia, glory to you, our God, Alleluia, Jesus Christ, fasted for us forty days and forty nights, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, glory be to our God, Alleluia, Jesus Christ fasted for us forty days and forty nights. Amin, Alleluia, Zoksa, Batri, Ke, Enyo, Ke, Agyob, Nev, Mati. Can in care in case to at your own a stony own on Amen. In the stabbing a rear gun, a man a honey women a gosh and the sort in hen and novi. Such a mono nine on Kiria lay son, Kiria lay son, Kiria flog is on a mean small heroines, small heroines, Tima Tanya Coney Evel, him be a small. Be Christos Benoti, Amen, as a show. Be here as dear Lord, as we all pray thankfully. Our Father who art in heavens, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heavens. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In Christ Jesus our Lord, for thine the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. Have a nice time and have a nice sleep and a nice evening. Thank you for staying with us. Thank you. Thank you, Abuna. You are welcome. Thank you. Bless him. Greatly appreciated.